from and the problem that brought you to this synagogue church of all nations and share with us your beautiful testimony. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Emmanuel. Good morning and win today. Good morning and keep winning in Jesus Christ's name. Brethren, my eyes have seen and witnessed the goodness, mercy, and favor of the Father. My name is Maureen Chidema Onzurike. I am a registered general nurse and I'm a tissue viability link nurse. I have come all the way from the United Kingdom. I am here to share with the people of God the healing and deliverance and all of God's blessings that I received here at the Synagogue Church of All Nations last week Sunday. It all started in 2022, November. I was on a night shift and a patient of mine had an old witness fall. And I went, I rushed to the patient just to help the patient up. And in that process, the patient pulled my right arm. I feel the day ticks and I rang um, the hospital just to let them know what was going on. The moment the patient pulled my arm, I felt a sharp pain on my C1 and C2, which is on my neck for those of us who are medical professionals. I also felt that pain as well on my T1 and T2, which is on my thoracic region. And when I breathe, I feel pain, intense pain, that to the point where I could not sleep on my right side. This basically plunged me into anxiety. I was scared. I was depressed because I used to be an energetic person. I play volleyball as a leisure, but I can't do them anymore. And I was told by the doctors that I would have to wear an arm sling for six weeks. Bread and trust me, it was not funny. For six weeks, I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't doing my laundry. I wasn't, I wasn't doing the cooking. And thankfully, I had friends who became sisters. They're watching me right now. Wendy and Elizabeth, thank you so much. They were helping with my laundry, were helping with my cooking, bringing food to me into the house. I was at home for two months. And on the third month, my manager called me and she said, Maureen, I'm sorry, you need to come back to work because if you don't come back to work, your pay is going to be slashed. I felt bad because how can I come back to work? I, I, I just have just one shoulder. How do you expect me to work? I called the occupational health therapist. I said, they want me to come back to work, but I still don't feel good. I still feel this pain. And she said, I should not worry what they're going to put in. Um, there'll be a risk assessment and things that will be put in place just to make sure my coming back to work um, is easy and hassle-free. And so that was done, and I was told not to do any personal care for patients. I was told not to lift patients, and I was also told not to lift anything greater than 500 gram. Children of God, when I went back to work, I felt this fear, this anxiety, like seeing every other person walking, being energetic, using both hands, and I just have just one hand to do all that I need to do. That I was made to coordinate the shift, but still my mind wasn't there because I felt I wasn't doing what I was meant to do. And in that process as well, I was also going for physiotherapy sessions. Like the, the physiotherapy session, instead of making it better, it was making it worse to the point where there was a time I went for physiotherapy. To the, to the point where when I went for a physiotherapy session, the moment the physiotherapist touched my shoulder, I just told her, could you please wait? I need to use the toilet. And the moment I went to the toilet, I took the back door and I went home. Like, I just couldn't take it. And also, I tried so many times to come to the synagogue, Church of All Nations. My mom tried also to send the morning water to me. It was like everything was, there was so much obstruction I just couldn't explain it. Fast forward to 2023, I was on a long waiting list to have my MRI done. Having the MRI done, there was nothing, nothing was seen. I was happy about it, but still, the pain was still there. I spoke to the consultant, I said, if I have done this MRI and still there's nothing, what's going on? Because initially, when I went for an x-ray, they said it was an acromioclavicular joint disruption, meaning the joints holding the scapula, my shoulder and um, the clavicle, my shoulder and the scapula behind. 
but still nothing. And this really, this really brought me down. I used to be a practice assessor for international, internationally educated nurses and student nurses. I couldn't do that anymore. My love for education, I stopped going to the learning and development hub to teach nurses and students. All the things that I've, I found joy doing, I stopped doing them. In 2024, I tried to apply for an annual leave. The devil decided to work again. My manager said, I'm so sorry, we cannot grant you your annual leave. And I remember, I tuned onto Emmanuel TV, the Emmanuel TV app on my phone. And what came on was Prophet T.B. Joshua's um, prayer. He said, open your lips and say, locate me in your mercy. Locate me in your favor, O Holy Spirit. He said, mean it, mean it. That was what he was saying in that prayer. And I, and I actually prayed along with Prophet T.B. Joshua. And he said, this time around, I want to be granted this annual leave. And while I was in my room, just on my bed, my manager called me and said, Maureen, remember the annual leave you talked about, you requested? I said, yes. And she said, well, we're going to give it to you. But remember, <clears throat> and she said, but remember, we would not give it to you in July and August. I said, fine, I would love to have that annual leave in June. I requested for two weeks and my manager gave me three weeks. <laughs> And while I was preparing to come down to the Synagogue Church of All Nations, I got a call from the hospital saying, uh, you need to come down June 12th to have your clinical neurophysiology appointment. So the clinical neurophysiology appointment was to have needles on my shoulder. This is basically to investigate and diagnose disorders of the nervous system and also to check why the muscles are not functioning. And then... That fear came again. I was like, no devil, you can't do this to me. This annual leave has come and I'm going, I'm coming down to Nigeria. And then I remember the service. Mommy was actually praying. She said, every spirit of fear, every spirit of shame. It was like she was talking to me as she was praying that prayer. And then I, I took my phone. I called, um, the clinic. I said, I won't be able to make it June 12th to have this clinical neurophysiology appointment. And they said, oh, not to worry. We have other dates as well. What date would you like? And they said, oh, we've got July 8th. We've got July 11th. And I said, yeah, I, I, I would love July 11th. And she said, no problem. We're going to book you in. And that was how I was able to come down to, this, to the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Now, brethren, before I move to what happened um, on Sunday... Two days before the Sunday service. Now, remember, when I told you I said I was having this pain, it stopped me from, from applying, to, um, applying for senior roles. I should have been a higher band role nurse now, but because of this pain, because senior roles beget bigger responsibilities, and I can't take bigger responsibilities with just one arm. So I decided to ditch every senior role. But before I came, I applied to senior roles, and I forgot all about it. Two days to the Sunday service, I had a dream after praying with Prophet T.B. Joshua. In that dream, a python, a very big python, beat someone. And as soon as that python beat someone, everyone was running, scamping for safety. I ran as well. I ran into a house, into a room, and I shut the door behind me. When I shut the door behind me, this python came into the room. And before I knew what was happening, I was wrestling with this python. But in my heart, I was saying, Oh God, a prophet T.B. Joshua. Oh God, a prophet T.B. Joshua. And before I knew what was happening, I used my bare hands to rip this python apart. And when I did, I looked on my right hand side. I noticed that there was a cup filled with cutleries. I took out one of, I took out one of the color, which was a fork, and I took out the fangs out of the mouth of the python. And then I noticed my mom and my older sister, they came to see me to, to find out how I was. And I, and I, and I spoke to them. I held out my hand this way and I said, please apply pressure to both hands because 
I'm not sure if the venom has gotten into my body. That was what I said in a dream and I woke up. Children of God, when I woke up, I checked my email. The first email I saw was that I was successfully shortlisted for a senior role. People of God, that clap is not enough. And on Sunday, on Sunday, I was seated just here. And when um, the evangelist and Pastor Mrs. Evelyn Joshua was administering healing and deliverance to the people of God, when the evangelist came to me, that first touch on my head, it was like someone was close to me with cymbals. And the person just hit the cymbals in my ear. And I felt that, that sound. The moment I felt that sound, it was like someone was in that process restructuring my neck. I felt this click on my neck. And after that, I felt that same rush down my thoracic region and to my tailbone and down to my leg, up again onto my shoulder and down to my hands. And my hands started vibrating. It was vibrating. And the evangelist touched me again. The only thing I could remember was I was doing this and then I sat down. And the moment I opened my eyes, the first thing I did was to raise my hand up and turn my neck this way. And I was like, wow, I can move my neck. I can raise my hand up. This was something I could not do since November 2022. People of God. Say, our God is good. Our God is good. Yes, on our screen, that is when she was being prayed for by the evangelist. And she's here today to thank God Almighty, to testify to God's goodness in her life. So, madam, can you show us that part that was affected? Exercise your newfound freedom in Christ Jesus. Tell us, how do you feel now? Children of God... I could not do this before. I could not abduct. I could not adduct. I couldn't turn my neck because here was actually stiff. I could not lie on my right side. And I could not squat. Now I can squat. On Sunday after the service, I was speaking to someone. And I just had to squat. And I was listening to that person. And before I knew what was happening, I said... I had to tell the person, I said, do you know I've been squatting for the past 45 minutes? And he was like, that's God in action. And I was, I was just because I couldn't do this before. And having to be part of the crash team, crash team means whenever a patient goes into cardiac arrest, we are the big guys that basically go there to resuscitate, to give cardiopulmonary resuscitation. I just, I just couldn't. I told my manager, I said, there's no point putting me on the crash team because I can't do anything. But today, to the glory of God, I can move my hands. Thank you, Jesus. So, madam, we can see some documents on display. Can you explain to us what the document is about? So, um, the document you could see on your screen was when I, um, I went to the hospital, which is Oxford University Hospitals, and the diagnosis was right shoulder and neck muscular pain and periscapular pain. And the management, which was the initial management, was an MRI right shoulder, which came in, no, mean nothing. And then physiotherapy at Northfield Orthopedic Center, which at the end of the day, I ran away because they were doing more harm than good. And a review face-to-face once MRI results returned. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. So, madam, with this wonderful thing that God Almighty has done in your life, what is your word of encouragement to our listeners out there? So, before I give my advice, the, the, um, the next day after the Sunday service, I woke up and I told my cousin, I said, this is the best sleep that I have ever had since 2022. Because it was difficult to sleep. 
I had to depend on painkillers to sleep. But this was the best, the best sleep that I've ever had since 2022. And then that same day, whenever I want to take a hot bath, she, she would have to put the bucket on a stool. But that day I went into the bathroom and I picked the bucket myself and I was screaming. She thought I fell into the bathroom and I was like, no, I did not fall, but I can pick this bucket. This is something that I could not do before. But right now I could pick this bucket and it's filled with water. My word of advice to people all around the world and people right here at the Synagogue Church of All Nations. In Jeremiah 17, 14, Jeremiah said, Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, O Lord, and I will be saved, for you are my praise. Brethren, whatever situation you're going through, be it a trial, praise God in your storm. The man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua said, those who bless God in their trials, he will surely bless them, heal them, deliver them through their trials. Hallelujah. And so, madam, we rejoice with you over this wonderful testimony. And we advise you, now that you have been saved by God's word, go and be ruled by his word. Remember to make God's word a standard for your life. And always remember that better is not good enough. The best is always yet to come. Vous venez d'écouter le merveilleux témoignage de Madame Maureen, qui nous vient de la Grande-Bretagne. Elle dit qu'en tant qu'infirmière, elle a eu, elle a euh, aidé une fois un patient qui était, qui souffrait de démence. Et lorsque ce patient s'est appuyé sur elle, elle a senti un craquement au niveau de son cou. Et que depuis ce jour, donc depuis 2022 novembre, elle a eu des douleurs au niveau de l'épaule et au niveau du cou. Elle dit qu'elle n'arrivait pas à se mouvoir euh, normalement, qu'elle n'arrivait pas à lever sa main et bouger son cou, qu'elle est partie voir des médecins, mais que il euh, n'y avait pas de solution. Euh, ils ne voyaient rien, même malgré le fait qu'elle ait fait des radios. Elle souffrait donc d'anxiété et que elle est même partie voir des physiothérapistes, mais il n'y avait pas de solution. Elle dit donc qu'un bon jour, elle a commencé à prier avec, euh, elle a prié avec euh, prophète Sibi Joshua euh, sur son téléphone et que elle a vu en fait. Euh, elle, elle disait dans sa prière, localise-moi dans ta miséricorde, Seigneur. Et elle a vu en fait euh, la demande qu'elle faisait par rapport à son emploi. Elle a eu une promotion et qu'elle s'est vue euh, du, depuis ce jour avoir des promotions et aussi avoir euh, des, des facilités au niveau de son emploi, son travail. Parce que dû au fait qu'elle ne travaille plus depuis six mois, on voulait euh, la renvoyer de, de, de son emploi. Mais elle dit que bonjour, elle a décidé de venir ici à la synagogue de toutes les nations et qu'on pouvait le voir. Le, un des évangélistes a prié pour elle et qu'elle dit que lorsqu'il lui a imposé les mains, elle a senti euh, que son, il y avait quelque chose qui se passe au niveau de son cou, au niveau de sa, son épaule. Et elle dit qu'après la prière, elle a commencé à bouger son cou librement et à bouger sa main. Elle dit qu'elle n'a plus de douleur depuis ce jour, qu'elle peut dormir librement, qu'elle n'a plus de, de douleur pour dormir aussi et qu'elle peut lever sa main, elle peut bouger son cou, elle est complètement libre pour la gloire de Dieu. Elle donne comme conseil d'accourir à Jésus-Christ et s'appuyer sur le livre de Jérémie, où le Seigneur dit qu'il guérit les personnes qui lui demandent de l'aide. Et elle dit que le prophète Tibi Joshua a dit que ceux qui viennent à lui, à Jésus-Christ, seront sauvés. Téléspectateurs du monde entier, continuez à regarder vos écrans. Spectadores de todo el mundo, acabamos de escuchar el maravilloso testimonio de la señora Maureen. Ella viene del Reino Unido, venía con un problema que tenía desde el 2022 por un incidente que tuvo en su trabajo como enfermera. Le afectó su cuello no, y, y su hombro, ya no podía mover su cuello, lo tenía rígido y no podía usar su hombro. Y nos cuenta que el dolor era severo, que le afectó su trabajo, le afectó su estado emocional. Sin embargo, cuando ella vino aquí a la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones, desde ese momento ya empezó a recibir su progreso fue ascendida en su trabajo aunque parecía imposible y el día de la oración ella recibió su sanidad, nos cuenta que después de Después de tantos años, desde el 2022, ella dejó de sentir ese dolor en su cuello, pudo girarlo, pudo eh, hacer todo lo que antes no podía y pudo dormir como no había podido dormir desde entonces. Nos aconseja creer en Dios y hacerlo de él nuestro salvador, nuestro sanador. Espectador, permanece conectado. Let us put our hands together, Father and Savior Jesus. Yes, we still have more testimonies to listen to. But before we listen to the next test fire, let us first watch and see how the miracle happened. Spectador, observa tu pantalla para ver cómo se produjo el próximo testimonio. <laughs> 